the to install Android Studio, if you haven't already, and I'll do that um, from scratch, just in case for those who uh, don't have it yet, we'll know how to do that. So you go here, or click this link here, and um, go to this page. If you're on the Windows system, this is the direct link to download that version. If you're on a Mac or Linux, you go to the options over here and it give you all these um, different uh, versions over here as well. Okay, so click this link, download, which I did already. It's a huge file, it's almost a gig uh, because it contains all the frameworks and um, libraries you need to uh, build apps. Okay, so once you download that file, then um, this is the one you're going to get. I'm going to go ahead and install this now. I did it once before, so it may have kept some of the um, libraries in here. So it may be a little bit faster on my end. If it's the first time for you on your machine, it might take about five or a little bit more, depending on your speed, the speed of your internet, also your computer. Okay, so um, very simple, very straightforward. Just click next. Ask you if you want to install the Android virtual device, also called AVD. Um, you can check that by default. It's rec recommended. If you forgot to do that, don't worry. You can always, you know, turn it on later. But um, I'm going to go and check that box here. Click next, and I'll just accept the default location where it's going to be ins installed. And I'm not going to do a shortcut. So install, and it goes. So this part is fast. It's not that, not, doesn't take that long. Um, when you run Android Studio for the first time, then it's try, it will try to download some other uh, libraries into your system. And that might take uh, a, a couple of minutes. As you can see, it's quite fast for this part. And then if I launch it now, so usually this part, I think I did already. Uh, that's why I'm able to run it really fast. If you run for the first time, then there are some libraries you need to install. So just accept all of them and, um, you know, and, and just click okay and accept the license and install all those libraries. Again, it might take you about three or four minutes, depending on your speed here. Okay, let's see here. And um, so once you go through the whole process, then you should be uh, presented with this screen here. All right. So I'm gonna uh, switch back to the um, site again. And I just wanna talk about a few things about Android. Android SDK, this is the toolkit you need that you need to um, allow you to develop applications. Okay, just like the Java SDK, right? Same thing. Without that, you can't create apps. Um, so, so the SDK provides a few, uh, some important tools you will need. Some of these are already built into the, the SDK. The platform itself, you need that for each version. Um, we build apps. Some of the tools you'll need for like for debugging, testing, and things like that. Here, it provides some sample apps already built into the uh, SDK. As you when you create a, a a project, you have a few options to load those apps. Those are fully functional apps, like really simple ones, uh, to a little bit more complex ones. It has documentation and support, and also the Google Play billing system built into it. So if you build an app, uh, you want to sell things on in your app, uh, Google Play, then you have the option to integrate a, a billing service as well. So you get paid for your app. The SDK um, has been around for a while, we'll say 11 years now. You should look at this uh, here, the first version. Um, they have a really cool code name. Uh, it's in alphabetical order. So we missed the A and the B. So we saw the C for cupcake, and then T and so on. So if you are a um, if you are familiar with Eclipse, it's kind of the same idea, right? Eclipse also has this kind of naming convention. So I don't know who is copying who, but <laughs> um, that's how they named it. Um, until you get to like down here, the latest version is called R. I guess they ran out of ideas, uh, you know, how to call Q and R. So they just call Q and R. So right now we are version 11. Uh, version 12 is just a bit around the corner. It's almost out. Now the release date is usually around the fall, sometime in the fall, in the August or September, October, around that time. So if you look at this date here, it's usually around that time. So by this uh, September, October, 
or maybe earlier, you have a version 12. And now I think it's in the final uh, beta, beta stage already. Okay, so the Android platform. So remember the SDK is for developing applications, right? The, the platform, the Android platform is the OS, which is the operating system or the runtime that runs the Android uh, program. Okay, so what you see here, um, everything you see here is um, what you will see that will come with a default a, a device, like your Android device, like a Galaxy or Google Pixel or what have you, or tablet. Okay, so you have a multiple layers here from the top to the bottom, whichever you look at it first. Um, the very top here is the app layer. This is the actual application you see on your on your um, devices, like the um, the contact. These are some of the built-in apps that came with the Android uh, devices by default. These are actual apps. And when you create your own apps, it will be installed at this layer, right, as well. And then the next layer down is the application framework. This is the frameworks that provide some of the really important um, uh, modules that your app talks to, or a bunch of APIs rather. So it manages uh, all the activities, um, a keyword here, activity here, um, all the package you, you need. If it's some of your own package, um, telephone for you know, your phone and other resources. So you can see something kind of very familiar um, with your device already, like a notification, things like that. So that's the app framework. Underneath that is a bunch of libraries. Okay, these libraries are again, included in the uh, device. So your Android devices have all these built into it, them already. Um, but within the layer is another um, really important piece of, of libraries called Android Runtime. This is the operating system, right? That runs all the Android uh, applications. Okay, and then underneath this layer is the Linux Linux kernel. These are some of the libraries and drivers that are really deep down uh, into the machine that you know controls your cameras, the camera, the uh, keypad, pad, display, and Wi-Fi. All this stuff are all down there. Okay, so your app you have the capability to interact with all of these libraries here, depending on what your app is is used for. So if you have a really simple game app, maybe you're not gonna go and you know do much with the camera and all these uh, other down uh, you know things from here. But if you have an app say that uses the camera, then you might, you will use the camera driver, um, the display, maybe even audio to capture audio as well. So so all these will be um, available to uh, your app. And if any additional library you can use, you can also download and, and include that as well. And that will be installed into the package as well. Uh, and it'll be packaged with the app as you uh, install to your, um, to your device. So just kind of, you know, a, a overview of, of the entire framework, what things are um, here. And, and it's important because um, you will see that when you run your, uh, uh, emulator, it will take a very long time to run it. Just an emulator and your device and the, and the machine, but it takes a long time. And the reason why is because all of these have to be built, rebuilt inside that emulator, even though it's just a virtual machine. So it will take a long time to emulate a, a, a device that will behave very similar to the actual Android app, um, Android a device. If you have, uh, I'm not sure if you have done it before, if you have uh, dabbled with like um, uh, the iPhone device, or if you, if you develop iPhone apps, you will see that their simulation is really fast. Okay, so there's a difference between a simulator and an emulator. Um, the reason why is again, the Android will run all these here, people build everything like a real uh, device, whereas the uh, iPhone, the iPhone simulator is really fast. You run it, you load it, it runs within seconds. And because iPhone, just, you know, Apple, so they are, everything runs natively on the Macintosh. So um, you don't have to, you know, pre-build all of these here. So that's the only reason why. And if, if it is a problem, if it's too slow on your machine, then your best option is to connect directly to a real actual device. So if you have a, a you know, a tablet or um, Pixel or a you know, Samsung Galaxy, you connect that directly to the, your computer and you can use your phone actual device to 
has the applications, it has a real feel to it because you know you get to use the, your um, your fingers to do swiping and all the stuff rather than just clicking on the device here. And also, it's much faster because your device already has all all of these in it, right? So it, it's not going to prebuild everything there. All you do just install it, run it. So that is actually the preferred way if you are a serious uh, developer. But nonetheless, if you don't have that option, the device here will be just fine. This is just another uh, uh, image I pulled up from the book here. If you look at this, it looks very similar to, you know, things that you already done, like an app. Um, again, from the uh, web applications to uh, the, uh, you know, intro to programming course where you built forms using uh, C-sharp, the same idea, right? The layout is the template. Activity here is the uh, source code, what we call the control, right? The color, and then the view itself here. Okay, so the the process for this app is really um, where you have your device, the, the uh, display, displays the layout. And when you do something on display, it goes to the activity. Activity is your source code receives the response and it needs to fetch a particular layout. So every app will have one activity at least and one layout. Okay, you, you cannot have an app without one of these. Okay. And it will fetch the particular layout, find the layout, and then you know uh, sends the layout back to the uh, code and then populate the layout with whatever data it's it needed and then you know render that layout to the view which is the device. And then when the user sees that, they can interact with it and it goes back again and then vice versa. Okay. So it's an event driven application, um, just like how you did with the um, uh, Visual Studio application you did with that C sharp. Okay. The same idea. So in activity, and, and this is some different uh, um, terms, is really, if you think of it like a, a form in the Visual Studio, we do the, um, the program, it's a form. And so you can have a lot of activities going on. So a lot of forms. So you can jump from one activity to another activity, okay? And we'll learn that much later in the course, maybe I think next week or the week after. So this is like the overall, the big picture of what, what's happening behind the scene. Very similar to a website, right? So you have the browser here, you navigate to a server, the server does something, it renders, you know, got some data, it, it renders the, the layout, sends it back to a user and then vice versa. So these are very similar to uh, that as well. Okay, um, what you did that Put down here. Uh, this is what you will see inside um, Android Studio. Okay, we'll, we'll take a look at this uh, later, a little bit later. Um, but um, this is how, how it is. Now, if you're using a different uh, uh, tool, different IDE, you may see different things. It will not look exactly like this. It's a different tool. Uh, so if you use Eclipse, you will not see something like this. If you're using uh, something else like uh, Ionic, right? It's another uh, program that you use. Ionic is a, a tool that you use to build apps as well, but that tool is you do a very, very, very few coding. You just basically drag and drop stuff. So, so this is uh, from the book. Okay, this is the uh, and the appendix. I forgot which one it is, but one of the appendix in this section here. Let me let's go back one more. Okay, so you remember that in um, in C sharp when you write your C sharp code, it you know runs your code, it compiles your code, and at the end you have an executable file, a .exe file, right? That's computer for, for a C sharp. In Java, will be something similar. Java. You have your .java file. This is where you do your, all your uh, actual code. This is the actual uh, source code. It compiles to a byte code called dot .class. So the same name will be converted to the same name with the dot .class here. So these are actually binary files that the Java virtual machine reads and runs your code here. So every class you create in Java uh, will be converted to a class, a, a dot .class uh, bytecode file. Okay, through a compiler called the Java C Java compiler. Okay. So that is is how Java works. Okay, now the Android does something kind of similar. Okay, so Android, um, what you have is a .dex file. 
it is named after Delvik, an executable file. Delvik is a city, I think it's a town somewhere in Ireland, is in Iceland, I think it's an Icelandic name. Uh, that was um, named there because the guy who actually developed this is from there. So it can named it after the city, the town. So the X file that is read by the Android uh, machines. So what's one that is that, so notice again up here, Java code. So the code you'll be writing is in Java format. It will be kind of compiled to the dot class, which is the Java byte code. If from here on, it's gonna take another step and then convert that to a dot dex file. Okay, here you see classes as plural. Okay, here's a singular. It just means that uh, usually you have your entire app will end up um, with a single dex file. But if your app is too big, then uh, usually it will break it down into multiple classes and you get multiple DEX files. But this is only for a really large app, okay? So more than likely, you can have a single DEX file that contains all your libraries, all your graphics, um, audio, video, whatever, everything there will be come out in, 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 in here, okay? And then this DEX, it actually gets converted further down the road uh, as well and it gets uh, compiled to another format called OAT, OAT. And then that OAT will be run by the Android device. And then from the on, it will convert to another version where the Android device actually reads. So a lot of, a lot of uh, um, uh, uh, process along the way, which is why it takes a long time to compile and run as well. Is a .dex file a machine level language? Yes, it's, yeah, it's a machine level language that Android reads. Um, yeah, it's kind of like this. So, so here you have your classes here. If you have your libraries, your graphics, things like here, all combined together to a DX uh, compiler. And we'll, it will combine all these here, and then it will spit up another, just a single DX file. Okay. So all these have in the mind to see, I mean, you don't have to know this. I'm just gonna show you, what show you that, if you might, you might, you might wonder, since it's Java, why doesn't it call that class? Why do you get that .dex file? So that's what it is. This, I think this is a, a better diagram, which I don't know where it is, but um, I want to just explain a little bit that a Android app, okay, is usually composed of um, three or four applications or core applications or, or components inside the app. And one of these is the activity. So they're like, the, I think activity, um, the other one is service for services. So activities, again, these are like the things that you do on your phone or your app, right? Uh, and then the services are uh, programs that run in the background, like, you know, fetching some data from a, a, a database server, um, performing some calculation in the background, so we're installing another program while your app is running, all those are services. And then another component is called the, um, the broadcast receiver. Broadcast receiver, right, is two words. Um, I mean, you can broadcast something out, you can also receive something back in. So you can broadcast some data out to other apps, right? And, and those apps can receive, or another app can talk to your app and you can receive those information as well. So it has that uh, uh, program or module built into it. And another one is called the content provider. Okay, so the content provider, you will probably really use that. Um, you use it only like if your app wants to communicate with another app. Say, you probably already seen this when you download an app, it asks you, you wants to access your um, contact list, right? So that contact list is a separate app. So if you want to get those data, then you will use that content provider uh, program to do that. So if it talks to other apps and the same device, you would use that. Otherwise, if it's just on, on your own app, you don't deal with other apps, then you don't really, don't really need it. So just, I think those four major uh, programs are built into it. So in this class, in this course, you will mainly just focus on the activity and uh, the service, which I mentioned in the unit uh, 11, or unit 12, the last unit, we'll talk about service. Uh, when we get there, but mainly activities and something called fragments. Okay, uh, so let's head over to 
the studio. And I think it's, I want to show you what it looks like as well as how it works and also how you create projects um, and, and so on, okay? Because this week you have an assignment. So I want to make sure that it's covered here tonight as much as I can. Um, and we'll go from there. So here is the studio. Now, do any of you guys uh, use any of the JetBring products like IntelliJ or um, iCharm? Okay. Okay. If you have, I want to say if you have, then you will see that Android Studio is the interface looks very similar, or almost exactly the same as the, uh, those interface because it's actually built by JetBrains. Okay, it's built on top of the JetBrains IntelliJ uh, program. Um, so the interface looks very similar. Okay, if you haven't used IntelliJ or uh, their products, their, their products are really, really powerful. Um, they are not free, but it's, it's free for students. So uh, I use that for my classes, my students use those as well. All right, so the first thing I wanna do before we create a project is to create an emulator, all right? So, and from this screen, uh, I want you to do this. So go here and go to configure. If you already opened it, you can exit out and come back to the intro screen here. Go to configure and choose the AVD manager, okay? AVD manager, AVD again stands for um, Android virtual device. Now, if you don't have a device yet, you will see this screen. If you have it, you will see a different screen. So I don't have it yet, I'm gonna create one. So as you can see, you can build app for all of these devices. It used to be only just for uh, phones. Now you have smartware, you have TV, smart TV, and you know cars and, and other apps as well. So create the virtual device and you can pick, as you can see here, we're only interested in the phone, okay? So all the devices available here, all their uh, different uh, brands and versions, um, are here, okay? So you can pick any one of those. Now, some of these are older machines. So if they're, if they're older machines, it's not, um, they might have some limitations. So pick one that is kind of new. You can try the Gal Galaxy uh, here, or I, I, I usually use that, or you can try the Pixel, like um, I guess four or four XL here, a little bit big, but that's fine. So let's say I'm choosing this one here. It's bigger, I can, I like the bigger screen. And I click next. And these are the versions, right? This is the Android SD, uh, Android um, SDKs. So again, the latest version is 12, I mean 11, which is R. So you just select that and click next. And here you can give it a name or just keep the as, as this doesn't matter. The orientation here, I'll just keep it at the portrait and you can just go ahead and click and finish. So here you add, you added one virtual device. You could add a mini if you want. If you want to try testing all devices, you need to come here and add all your devices here. So when you run your app, you can test on all of them. Okay. So once you have this one here, you can run this. You can click the play button here. It's going to launch it. As you can see, it takes a while to build that app for you, right? It's going to build uh, the entire core libraries. Uh, it installs everything there for you. It will make this app, this device look as real as the actual device. The only thing is we just can't, I just can't touch with my finger. Unless my screen is touch, it's a touch screen that I can, but mine is not, so I have to use my mouse. So I'm gonna close this one here. You can see this is a, um, it's running by itself. It's the emulator. Now, to use this device, you have to like kind of click and press the mouse and go up, right? Like that, if you swipe up, you see all the apps here. And if you have internet connection, this is actual like an actual device, okay? Now um, to install app, if you wanna try, for example, if you go to um, the site over here, if you wanna to try to install the app that I had, like at the device here. And if you do have access to any of the, of the um, APK out there, or you have your own, you can also do this too. So let's say I'm gonna download this file, save link as and download it and save it to my desktop. Okay. And to install it, you just basically drag, drag this file, the APK file to this device. 
and it's going to install that for you. And again, my app is like, uh, you know, five, six years ago. So it's a little bit dated. So therefore the, um, it was running I think version five. So it might, it might prompt some errors saying that the mess, a message is saying that it's too old or something. Once it's installed, um, if you again, swipe up and you see it's here, the icon is like kind of hard to see, but it's this flat fairy thing here. And if you click on it and it will launch you, ask for the phone stuff, just say no, okay, just disable that, just say deny anyway. I'm not gonna use that here. And click continue down the bottom. And it has the warning, it was built an older version, it may not work, whatever it is, just say okay. And so, and as for the install the gameplay, you don't have to do that. It's just an actual app, if you have a, an account with Google Play, then it will track your points and things like that. So just cancel that. And so this is the app, okay? It's a game app, so it's a little bit different from a, an app, but it's, it is indeed an app. So it's made an Android. Um, and it's, it's, if you play Flappy Birds before, it's the same, same idea. It just add a few stuff in there, like some uh, different mode here. Uh, you could turn off the music if you want to, um, the normal and hard mode. This one doesn't work because I, you have to connect it to the, to the gameplay. But um, yeah, so you can build something like this really easily in Android. And so once you are done, and uh, you can basically just cancel out. I, uh, this version, I did not put the quit button. I, I suppose to do that. Um, I think they made that requirement nowadays, but it was way back then, so I didn't have to do that. But um, you had to have a quit button somewhere. So if I click that stop button here, okay, and you see it kind of do like this, you just turn it off, you just swipe up and it's gone. To uninstall your app, you will go again, swipe up, choose the ad you want to install, click on it and hold for like a second and then move up and then just drag it to the uninstall. And it will uninstall that for you. Okay, now if you don't uninstall, if you later on you come back and you run the same device, it will be there. So again, it will treat like a real app, a real device on your, on your machine. This is really cool. Yeah, so if you don't have a device, use this for that. You can actually go to Google and install your app, but I, I don't think I don't. Really, I'm not sure if you can do that though here, uh, because you have to have an account with Google. Do that. But if you have access to APK, you can test it all here, and it's all, you know, um, functional like a real app a device. Now what we do is we run a separate uh, device, okay? And inside the app itself, when you create your own uh, program. You have a um, you have access to this SDK um, uh, emulator directly inside the IDE, so we're not going to run it outside here. I'm just showing you that if you want to run it out, run this this way. You can do this way. If you run from within the program, you can install it. I mean, you can install apps to that only through the SDK. So just in case you want to test it out, and I will do a separate video to show you how to connect to a an actual device. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off this uh, emulator because it does take a lot of you know, my computer memory. So I don't need it for now. And we're going to create a new project in here. So a new project. And so here are the apps, the simple apps that I mentioned earlier in the uh, notes saying that it has some built-in apps you can use. These are again are functional already if you want to try them out. So when you, in your spare time, you know, feel free to print them all. But for us, we're going to um, just use the, the um, a very basic one, maybe, I guess, just the empty, yeah, just the empty activity. Okay, I don't want, don't want to throw too many things in there. It's, it's confusing. So select the empty activity, <clears throat> go next, and it give it a name. Um, my app, I'll just say my first app. Okay, the name of the app here, the package name, will be something like this. Now this is a, this is very common in naming your packages in, in Android and also in Java packages. Uh, usually if you 
you know, build an app, you have a domain name for your company or your site, whatever it is, and you make it as unique as possible. So if you reverse the domain name of your, your site. So app, whatever it is, okay? Uh, location, I'll choose the default location here. You can change it if you want. If the language is not Java, just make sure you select Java and not Kotlin. Although I think eventually we're gonna, they're gonna switch over to Kotlin. And then the minimum SDK is you have a few options here. So it goes all the way back to version uh, four, okay, or API 16 here. If you select that one, the lowest one, it will tell, it says your app will run at 99.8% of all devices. So the older uh, version you go back to, that means it's more, it's like a backward, backwards compatible. You have more machines to run. If you choose the later or the newer version, then you will see that if I choose R, only 1% or less than 1% of the people today have this version. So your app will not be really, you know, useful, right? So you want to pick something kind of, you know, uh, a few years back. So you can choose 16 or you can, I usually just choose the version five, the Lollipop. This is the version I built mine, um, I think the Lollipop version. So 21 or 22 here will be fine. So at least 94% of devices can run my app. Then just click finish. Now it does take a, a um, a little while to uh, install and run the app to build. And you can see the progress bar on the bottom right is running something called a, a Gradle. Gradle is a compiler. It's a, it's a, a separate program that um, handles all the building and packaging of your application together. So you're not going to touch the Gradle um, in, in, in here unless you know what you're doing because it might do some cause some problems. So in this course, we're not gonna do any of that at all. We just leave it as is, okay? <clears throat> so we're running a really simple app. That's why it doesn't take that much to load. If you choose one of the other bigger apps, then it might take you maybe a minute or maybe two to load everything here. Okay, so before we do this, I wanna go and do some setup setting here. Um, yours may not be like mine if you run it for the first time. Yours might be like really small like this. Right. So I usually make it really big, like so you can see, I can zoom in, zoom out. Um, I press the control and I, you know, roll that little ball there, my mouse ball. So to do this, just a few settings. And once you set it, I think it will stay, on, um, say on there, next time you load, it will be already preset. So just a few configurations here. Go to the view and under the tool, under, under the appearance, uh, turn on the toolbar, okay? If you turn on that, I want you to see a, a toolbar show up on the top here. Just some shortcuts here. <clears throat> Go to um, File, uh, Settings. And if you want to choose a different theme, it's under the Appearance here, okay? Appearance and then Appearance. If you choose the dark theme, okay, if I apply, it'll be like dark theme. Right? If you like that, otherwise, I just choose the light theme, apply. That's, that's where it is. Um, so instead of doing this way, I'm gonna go down to the editor, expand the editor tab under the general. And yours may not have this checked. Okay, the very first one says mouse control, change font size with control plus mouse wheel. Check that, it's really helpful. And then the soft wrap, for some reason, it doesn't capture my screen here, but you want to wrap your code using a soft wrap. So I added here the dot I mean, star dot Java, and, and for some reason it doesn't work. So you can try that as well. It just means to wrap your, your code so you don't have to scroll all the way to the right. Um, may or may not work, but uh, usually that should work. And anything else I want to uh, set up? The font. The font size is defaulted to, I think, size 13. If you want to make it bigger, I usually choose like kind of 18 or 20 um, because I'm sharing my screen. So I want you to see it well. But if you, you don't use, it doesn't really matter up to you. So choose 18. And I think that's all I need for this one here. Okay. So just click uh, apply or click OK. And then now you can, you know, zoom in, zoom out 
and your code here using the control and your mouse wheel, okay? And if I, and if I you know, resize this to the right, see my code doesn't wrap. It's supposed to wrap, uh, for some reason it doesn't do it. <laughs> if it doesn't do it, then you can just right click on this column here, right click and select the soft wrap. And that should wrap your code. So when you, you know, reach the maximum of your screen size, right side, it would just wrap it. So you don't have to scroll. Just some cool stuff for um, that. And um, this is a shortcut for repeating lines. If you're not familiar with this tool, like if you want, if you want to copy this line, usually, usually like you highlight it, control C to copy it, and then you move down, you paste it, control V to paste it back, right? Okay. And this tool is, has a really shortcut, just press control D and it will duplicate those lines for you, okay? So save you a lot of typing. And there are a lot more um, shortcuts, but mainly those, those two you use quite a lot. All right, um, if you don't see this, uh, don't worry, um, which I think we run it, you should see these two files open, the activity underscore main dot XML and the main activity dot Java. Okay, so before we do this, I wanna focus on the left side of your screen over here. Again, it's kind of small, I hope you can see it. Um, let me collapse everything so you can see here. So again, we're not gonna to touch the Gradle scripts here, okay? Your app is inside the project tab on the right side. If you happen to click on it, you can toggle on and off. Okay, kind of similar to Visual Studio. Um, if you look above here, it says Android has a little arrow down here. If you click on that one, you see a different, you know, a context menu here. These are different packages and folders you can, you can, you know, display here in this column. This is like the explorer of a column. On inside the app, you have a folder called SRC, which is source. Under the SRC, you have three files, three folders. Okay, we ignore the test stuff for now. We just under the main, there are two more folders. So um, right here, I'm missing something for some reason. Okay, now let me go back and do something else because I'm, I'm not seeing something here. It doesn't look right. Okay, can you go back to the uh, drop down and select the project um, files? So you see more, more folders outside of it. This is, I want to show you something like this. Do you see the Gradle, all these files, and then the idea, and then the Gradle, whatever it is, right? So the Gradle, again, we're not going to touch this file. We leave as is. These, uh, again, don't delete these. These are just some config files that Gradle needs to build your app. All we're going to focus on just inside the app folder here. So inside here, you will see uh, that we have the libraries here. A, um, again, ignore these. Inside the source. And then inside the main again, this file was not shown before. That's what I want to show you, okay? So in the main folder, this is with the root of your project. So in the root of your project, you must have this file called Android manifest.xml. Okay, this is a metadata file that manages all your libraries um, you need inside your app. Okay, it gives you some information about this app, the, the name of your app here, the uh, the icon for your app um, and some of the stuff. So the more, if you add more stuff to your application, this file will automatically update. So don't go in here and, and change things in here unless you know what you're doing. So by default, it, it'll be managed by Android Studio. Okay. So this file is required for all apps. Okay. If you don't have this, you, your app will not run. Um, so this is the manifest, manifest file. It will be kind of similar to if you have um, if you ever build like a Node.js applications, it's like the packaged file, okay? Or the .json file. Now inside the main folder, you have two folders, the Java, which is the source code file folder, and the RES again, is just a resource folder. The, the Java file is your source code. You see that some example, first app. This is the package name when you create it, right? Remember, com.example.myfirst here. So 
the package in JSON in Java is, is represented by uh, this structure. So now inside this app, this folder is the actual file called main activity. If you open that file now, you see here, okay, this is the Java source code. In the very first line, you see the package is come the example dot my first app. Each of these dot represents a directory. So this one here is this folder here, okay? So it encode, this is how you see it. In the actual physical file structure, it will create a folder for you. On the import here, this will grow as we build apps. You guys are gonna need a lot of libraries. So um, kind of similar to uh, C Sharp, I'm sure you're already familiar. And most of these will be installed or input automatically uh, for us when we add more stuff in here. So every Java program uh, inside here will always have a main activity um, uh, file. This is a class that is a extending a parent class called app compact, compact activity. So this is the default app for your app. This is the entry point to your application. Inside this app function, you have a override um, reading function, right? If you remember uh, inheritance, a function called onCreate. So every, every activity will always have a function called onCreate to run the, that activity, okay? And then inside here is you do some stuff in here. For now, just some really some basic stuff. So activity an activity is in the source code. Now, if you head over to the RES over here, expand that folder, you have a bunch of other subfolders. Inside one of these is called the layout folder. Expand that, and you will see the activity underscore main dot XML. So these two files, they kind of go along with each other, okay? And this is the naming convention. Usually we have an, a, another activity, let's just say, um, you know, play, right? Play game activity. So you can say play game activity dot Java. And then here you have like a play game activity underscore um, whatever it is, and then XML. So these are your layouts. So think of this as the view, right? Or the template. This is the controller, your source code, okay? Um, and then you have other folders in here as well in the rest resources here, the drawable, drawable V24. Drawable just means that anything that you can draw, okay? So don't worry about what they mean that for now. And then below that you have a bunch of folders called midmap. Anybody know what's a, what, what a midmap is? Heard of it before, if not. Mimap, um, Mimap is uh, quite common in actually game development. Um, you especially 3D games or even huge, huge 2D games. Um, what what it does is if you if you op collapse, I mean open one of these. Actually, if you open, yeah, this one doesn't help. The uh, the the other one down here, the one that says HDPI. MDPI, XHD, these are resolutions of your graphics, okay? If you expand a couple of these here, you see that it has the same exact name for each of those files. These are graphics. These are just the launcher file, the icon that you launch, you install on your app. So if you, if you go here and open it, double click on it, you see the little icon here, right? Like I did with my, the, um, the angel, uh, the falling uh, fairy, same thing. And then if you go down here, you click on this one here, you, you double click on it and you see that the, the, the further down you go, the larger the file size. You can see here, the extra, extra, extra large one has about, you know, if you look at the launcher pack, uh, PNG 10K, and then you go like almost 8K, 4K and two and then, and so on. And there's one thing missing here, it's no longer here, it used to be, um, and there's another photo called LDPI for the low resolution. But now I guess most phones are pretty um, high now. So I think the medium is like the lowest now. So what this does is that the MIP map is that, you know, notice, notice how you run a program, a, a graphics, a really graphic intensive game or application. Um, when imagine a car, right? A, a 3D car, a car object in the game who comes really close to your screen then you want to load a really high resolution because you want to see all the details about the car, right? So it's a really big, 
big pile. But as the car goes farther and farther away from the screen, then you know those details are no longer important. So therefore, you don't need to render that huge, huge file at a very far distance. We, we don't really see this, those details. So instead of you know, just shrinking the size, the image size of that car, you will load a lower resolution of the car. So, so you will provide different versions of resolutions of the same object in the same position, same, exactly same um, uh, design, but at a low resolution. So those objects that are further away, you load a much low resolution. So therefore it improves the speed of your program. That's to improve memory usage too, right? Yes, memory usage as well as uh, performance. So you imagine if you have like 10 high resolution cars and you, you only show one in front of you, but you have nine of those are really big images loading in the background, right? It's gonna take a lot of time to load, it's, that's not efficient. So that's what this mid-map means. Um, when you build an app, like the game that I, I, I built, right, you, you have a sprite sheet of animations, right? Of little, um, of like the 10 or 20 or 24 frames of images. So instead of you know, having like 24 separate pictures like this, you will put all those images into a single file and putting those things into a single file is actually makes your file much smaller than having 10 separate individual files, okay? So sprite sheets are really, really um, are useful in game development and also for apps as well, if you're doing any animations. Okay, so that's why you have these different versions of Mimap here. So if you are launching on a really high uh, uh, resolution uh, device, it will launch the correct type. If I'm using a tablet, then chances are I'm gonna launch the XXXHDP out here. Just an extra, extra, extra high definition pixel. Okay, so that's what those main apps are. So we have um, graphics, you would throw them in here. One for each uh, resolution. If you care to do that, right? Usually you would. But for us, we will look mostly in the layout and inside here, the values folder. If you expand that folder, you will see three files. Well, now this is based on the app that we load. We, we loaded the empty activity, so you only see three files. If you open another one that has more data, you will see more files in here. But this is pretty much the basic ones. So inside here, you have the strings, colors, and themes. The themes folder is the theme for your app. At the color of the app, or you can change the color of the app, the main theme, just like a particular any anything you want to do is here. And you can choose different themes as well later on for a different device or different resolution as well. So at least one theme. And then you have the colors for for you to use. Notice all these are XML uh, tags. Now these names are important. Okay. The purple here has the name purple. 200 maybe is, is the resolution thing. So if you go back to the theme of here, you notice that it says the primary color, okay, is set to color purple 500. This number comes from the color file with the purple underscore 500 name. That's this guy right here. So it will load this data to the primary color. Okay, so these XML files, they kind of depend on each other as you go. So all is your colors. All, is right? that all hex colors, hexadecimal colors? Uh, yeah, hex, hex, hexadecimal, yeah. So you put all your colors in here, you know, give them some unique name. Um, the strength is something you will use quite a lot. Here, it just have one line. Okay, the string here is, like a, a, a collection of names of variables, okay? Text, mainly text. So this is the app underscore name has the name of my app. If I wanna change the title of the app, I will come and change here. So now leave this open. If you go back to the main activity file over here, open that file. Now, these layouts here has three modes of display. Notice if you see this one, like I do here, you're in the design mode, okay? If you look on the top right, up here you see three buttons here. One says design, one says split, notice it, one says code. 
Okay. Similar to Visual Studio. Uh, if you use ASP.NET or Visual Studio, something similar. So you can you can design the layout of your app using this GUI interface. Now you will see uh, this one here is on the right side. This is the attributes here. You can collapse these, turn that off. You have two two copies here. The one on the right side, the dark blue. This is just a template. Okay. The one you actually put design is the one in the white here. This is the actual layout you would see on the phone or on your device. So you see it has the text called hello here. Okay. Now these are um, each of these components here, these controllers here. I'm, I'm, I'm in a design view, okay? On the left side, you see the palette and has some common controls, very similar to Visual Studio. You have the text, all these text controls here, uh, buttons, uh, widgets, uh, different views here, uh, also the layouts, containers, and then so on. So each of these is called a controller, but a the technical term or the term they use in Android is called a view. And a little bit weird because a button is a button, but it is a view, okay? So these are called views. Um, just so we kind of get used to this uh, nomenclature thing. Uh, so when I say view, it really is these objects here. Uh, so that's why you see down here, this text here, this box here, you can, oh, let me zoom in. This text box here, let me collapse this side. This is, if you click on it, is this one over here on the left side under the component tree? It says text view, right? Okay, it's a view. Now, on the component tree here, you see on the very top one is a constraint layout. So each layout has one of these options right here. If you click on the layouts here, it has a constraint layout has a linear layout, uh, horizontal, vertical, frame layout, table layout, um, uh, and table row. And there's actually more. It's a grid layout that doesn't show here, but you can code it in as well. So every, every, every activity you create must have a layout, a main layout. So you see this component tree here, it builds like a tree in this sequential order. Whatever I put here in the tree is in that order. Um, I can, so for example, if I go here to the buttons and grab a button here and drag it to my screen. So you see that the button is on the tree here is the second below the text view, okay? So the order here is kind of important. Later on when you do some coding, because you can say, uh, I want this button to be aligned below this text view, right? Or above other text view, but for now, um, just know that this, this tree here lists all the components or the views you add to this. You can move this around um, depending on the view type you have, okay? If you choose a different type of view, a layout, um, you will see that you cannot put things like where they are supposed to be. If you, if you drag something here, it will automatically snap to the top. So depend on the layout. Again, we have time, just play with them. So it's by default, it's using the constraint layout. Um, you can change this layout too, okay? If you uh, right click on it, either here or right click right in this white space here, right click and I want to change, uh, convert the view to a different layout. You can do that as well. So, I mean, we're not gonna do it, but if you do this and you see that you have the different layouts here, okay? So you can change that as well. So, um, this is the design layout, the split, if you like it, you can see both code here. If you have a large screen like I do here, then this is useful because you wanna see both the code and the, the, uh, the um, screen the interface here. Because whatever I, I type here, whatever I change here will reflect it instantly. Okay, so if you want to see the code view only, then this is the code view for that. Okay, so let's go back here and I'm gonna delete this button for now. Just to select on it and delete for now. Let's make it simple. So go to the split view. Um, maybe we'll see it together uh, better this way. We don't, I'm, I don't really care about this, uh, you know, a template of the blue side, just on the one, the white side here, okay? So 
as you can see in the code, it's all uh, XML. XML, as you know, the rule is you must close every tag, right? This is the opening tag called Android IDX constraint layout here. This is the layout name. You close it down here. So you must have a root layout. Of course, you can have nested layout too. I can put another layout inside here, or I can put multiple layouts inside here. So if you think about, um, you know, web development, it's like the div tags. You put a div tag into other div tags and so forth. And then inside here, this is the beginning of the tag. You can see there has a lot of information here as well. It gives you uh, some schema. This is already, I mean, adding automatically for you. You don't have to worry about this much here. The Android layout, the width is its match parent and the match parent here, I mean, it will default it to the entire screen size of whatever the parent is. And then the name is the main, <clears throat> dot main activity, main activity. This one here maps to the Java file main activity over here. Okay, so every activity, every layout will map to a particular file in, in the code here, okay? The inside the tag, so from here, this is the beginning, closing. Inside I have other views or components or we call controllers, right? So this is the text view. Notice again, begin here and right here, right? Inside here, you have a lot of attributes to create, to add. And all these are, uh, are needed just to format this little, you know, text word, say hello world. So the layout is again, the width here is a wrap content. And again, you can set these up uh, um, uh, in the uh, design uh, view. But for now, just kind of want to show you what it looks like in here. So the text contains the hello world comes from here, Android tech. Text here, this is the text message here. This example, we hard coded this in. Okay, you could have so that the text here comes from the strings out here. And, and um, so instead of, you know, hard coding that inside here, you will load it from these strings. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Now, this again, just a location of this. Uh, uh, message, where is it gonna be located at? So sometimes you have to kind of use both the code view and the design view to do both, okay? Sometimes it's easier to do in the code, it's much quicker doing the code. Sometimes it's easier to do in the visual view. So you have both uh, uh, to your advantage. Now these may be a little bit um, hard to remember or, or um, you know, recall, of course, I don't remember all of these. I'm sure nobody does unless you use this on a regular uh, basis. Okay, so if you go over to the design view again, and on the right side, uh, click on the one that says attributes. Okay, so the attributes here will show based on what you select over here. So right now I'm selecting on the layer, right? On the layout. I see all the attributes that match this layout. Again, back to Visual Studio, uh, same thing as the form. This is like the form, all the attributes. If I click on the Hello World, now all these attributes here apply to that text view, either text, click here or over here, it doesn't matter. And you can see that if you expand either these uh, rows of information, you see a lot of you know, attributes about that particular uh, um, view. So usually every view or every object you add to this form here should have an ID. Just like if you remember the forms in Visual Studio, right? So this text box, text view, in this case, we did not create an ID for it. You need an ID if you want to manipulate this programmatically. Otherwise you don't need it, but I highly recommend it. Okay, so the ID will go here. Um, the way IDs are created inside uh, 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 this program is you, if you're using this GUI interface, you just give it a name. So for example, I'll say um, PXT hello world, right? That's my ID. I'm naming the way I used to, I'm used to do that in, in Visual Studio. So that's the ID for this text box. Okay, it will, pre, will pre-populate this field, same thing here. The text, as you can see, is says hello world. This is the GUI interface. Now, if I go back to the split mode, you can see 
you see that now we added an Android ID to this text box. The way we add ID is use the add symbol. If you're doing this in the code here, add symbol plus the ID and then slash the name of that ID. An ID in this activity should be unique. When it's activity, so far there's only one activity, it's called main activity, okay? So all the ID will be unique. If you have another, and then another activity, call it, uh, you know, my user activity, then you can have the same idea over there as well, which is okay because now they're completely independent. Again, back to Visual Studio, you have two separate forms. They can have their own independent IDs and they, they will be, um, so they should be unique for that particular activity. So you can, you know, code here. Uh, this ID is, is important. If you don't put the plus sign here, if you just go like that, okay, it means different things. It, if you omit the plus sign, it means it's going to look for other places where there's an ID called text hello world, and it will reference that. So without the plus sign, it's a reference. Whereas if you put the plus sign, you are declaring an ID. So that little thing can, can be a little bit tricky here. Okay, And of course, this ID will tell you if you do it something incorrect. So. Again, all the layouts are here. Um, uh, you know, we're not gonna be able to do everything here tonight, but um, we have time, explore it, play with it, you know, break it if you can, so you know, right? Um, all the attributes are listed down here. Later on, when we create, you can add background colors here. Uh, these again are event, so you can add event listeners. Later on, we'll do that in the code. We can also um, add it here too. Like if you scroll down, you see something like, um, you know, like on click right here, right? So if you click on it, what does it do? So you will map these, this to a function, a function will invoke, and then it will do something here. Okay, so we do that um, uh, next time. Or if you do the exercise, you, you, you also see that. So these are all the, all the attributes that are um, applicable to this particular type of component. If you add a button, you might have different things. If you add a checkbox or radio, you might get a different things, okay? Um, so again, change it here or in the code. Initially, you will be like, uh, you know, attaching events uh, directly, you know, to these uh, fields. But later on, we'll be doing inside the code. So we create like event listeners. It will listen to a particular component through its ID. And based on that ID, if you click on that event or if you, a swipe or if you pinch whatever it is, it will invoke that particular function. And that's more uh, uh, efficient than coming here and you know clicking and adding here. Okay. It does not have every feature you need here. This is just some for your convenience, but most of the things you will do is also in the code. So the, again, the basic layout uh, for, for layouts, um, then your source code will be inside this folder called my first app. Okay, when you run this application, Android will look for this activity and it will look for this create and it will launch it. And it will set the content view. It will launch the activity underscore main. This here is this file over here. It maps the layout. So this uh, object called R, it's a really important one. This R, uh, I believe it stands for resources. It, it maps to all the data coming in the resources folder here, okay? So you get the layouts, you get the, um, the uh, strength and text here. You can also get all these information programmatically through the R object. So here, r.layout.activity.main is this one here. If you just wanna see what that is, you can say R dot, it will tell you all the other objects you can you can get, you can see, right? So we'll use a lot of these here. So here's a string. String is referring to this file here. If I type string dot, what I see, I see the app name. So there it is, right? This is available because in the string, there is a thing called app name. So you access this data through the program, you, through the R object, and you will use this quite extensively to access those data, okay? And that's how also you create uh, event listeners by 
you know, um, go into the theme layout, the layout here, find a folder, um, a, a button or a text field that has an ID of something. So I, I'm gonna do something like R dot layout dot uh, activity main dot, and you see here a bunch of other stuff, right? Or if you know the ID, you would just say R dot ID dot, and there's the ID called text hello world we created earlier, okay? So it, it knows where to find those information through the resources folder. So that's why your data must be unique for each Java file. It called the, or I should say, each activity. And now this one will target that particular button or that text field. And you can do something when, when that button is clicked. Okay, so we'll learn more of this stuff uh, um, as we go. So, for this week, you know, um, run through the exercise in, in chapter two. It walked you through the entire process of building an app, just like you see here. And it, I think also walks you through creating another uh, few controls, uh, write a really simple function to process some data to your app as well. So once you get that done, uh, hopefully that exercise will give you a better uh, understanding uh, of, of how the app works. But most importantly, just know what these files are located and how they are related, okay? So your source code goes in here. The resolution here is the X, mostly XML files and your graphics in here. 